today we'll see you know <coughs> we'll, we'll work on narrative views and how to schedule this OTBA reports. The scheduling concept is somewhat different when we compare with you know BAP reports. Based on some conditions, we are trying to you know schedule our OTBA reports here. That is, we'll see. So before that, first we'll see you know <coughs> how to create a narrative views. Narrative views nothing but in general we will get an email notifications right. In a in a email notifications we are maintaining somewhat information like employee name, employee number, and you know employee status. If uh, uh, if you want send in a supplies information, okay, just only you know single record. Then we'll go for you know these narrative views. Just first we'll see how to work on narrative views so that you will get some understand. Just we'll delete somewhat you know columns here. this is one of the analysis just save it so this is our result here <coughs> again views just select here a new view other views there is a concept called narrative views narrative just select this it will create you know one of the narrative view for us just edit the view here this is the narrative view just you can identify here narrative and here edit symbol is there just click on the edit view so this is your narrative view designing section here here i will open our analysis here also just we'll see So these are the columns, vendor name, supplier type, status, supplier number, site, country. Vendor name in the first position, supplier type in the second position, status in third position, supplier number fourth and followed by fifth and followed by the sixth. In narrative views, we are representing, you know, column positions or attribute positions. Okay, for example, if you want to display vendor name in your narrative view, okay, you can represent at the rate one. At the rate one is nothing but the first position of your analysis. The first position is vendor name. At the rate five or at the rate four is nothing but supplier number. At the rate six, nothing but country. Here, just in the narrative view section at the rate one. This is complete your, you know, first position data. And followed by at the rate two, second position. At the rate three. Now you know it's excluding the data. So this is at the rate one. Here the row separator is available for us. A row separator means how you want to separate the data. See here 1099 reporting vendor and separator by one of the iPhone. So for our purpose, just we'll try to hard code some of the, you know, vendor numbers here. Here, filter. Just three supplies are there selected, just save this. Now here, just again we'll open this view. Now here, a new other views, narrative, just select this. Just edit the narrative view here at the rate one. Now we are getting you know three suppliers here, and followed by five or whatever it may be. This is first 
second and third or you can you know i whatever it may be you can and the prefix here and you know something you can like this first position is vendor name in this in our analysis here you can write supplier name this supplier name and if you want to split the data into the next line here there is an option line break just click on the line break it will create the line break for us now the second position is supplier type Can use here line break supplier name supplier type and third position is status supplier status the syntax of the expression is invalid supplier status three. A name supplier type here we can you know restrict the how many rows we want to display rows why it's showing this is supplier test what is the test here Something supplier name and supplier type just to try to verify the results here okay supplier type is supplier test supplier status is repeating status it's failing this is surprising how come the syntax of the expressions to be evaluated is invalid why is it invalid status one two three supplier site it is four and five supplier number you can use supplier number to write is failing in general you should now get a result one two three four five and you can use the line break. Their site is four six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is sixth position. Failing is first time I'm seeing this error. OTB report content is you know behaving you know every time seems to be different. Not sure why it is failing. So in generally you know uh, we are displaying the values like this followed by the positions supplier name supplier type something so and so the positions here you want if you want to restrict the rows you can. Number of rows you can display. Number of rows you can display, whatever you want. And you can add the prefix here. Something here are player details. Something here are display details. And you can use line break. Like the same as your notification, you can change. 
which is what is the utility of this in real time yeah where do we use this that is we'll see in you know uh, in a scheduling part every page here line break something you can use like this so what you will do in general you know uh, we are sending in in our article we do have alerts concept right based on some condition we are sending an email notification so here also if you want to send an email notification like this if you want to send an email notification like this then uh, we need to create a narrative view like this on top of this uh, we'll try to add a one condition if condition is uh, meet our requirement then it this data will goes as a email notification to the respective recipient and the your your body is looks like this data is looks like this in your email notification instead of table format you can send like this okay here just delete this delete this and save it this is your overall you know result you can send this information to you know as a email notification instead of table data instead of table representation you can send this information to your email notification and you can apply some html properties for this you know for the left alignment right alignment and you can add some more html tags you know syntaxes here here contains html markup you can add you know enable this and you can add html tags as well in this you can change the colors and if you want you know change you know bold or whatever it may be you can change now this we will use in our scheduling part here there is a option called otb component new agent this agent especially for scheduling your otb analysis here scheduling is not straight forward based on some conditions we will try to schedule our you know uh, otb analysis this is your scheduling screen something we do have multiple tabs are available general schedule condition delivery content recipient destinations and actions some of the you know uh, features are available before this i will try to see here there is an option called action one more component action is nothing but we are implemented some of the action items right whether it is gmail.com or you know navigate to bi content or navigate to web page these actions we can create as a independent here just you know navigate to bi content select the action navigate to bi content just save the action nothing but a independent action you can perform here custom something gp supply to action now just navigate to catalog here you could see an action item see this is your action if you want to edit you can edit if you want to execute you know you can execute just click on the execute you now it will try to open your analysis like this you can you know use this actions as a independent actions and you can use the conditions also here there is an option condition here based on analysis for example i am selecting any one analysis here create condition based on analysis or kpi kpi we doesn't use just go for analysis only just select the browse select any one analysis you can create these you know action item with the independent
here i am selected one of the analysis here true if row count is equal to or is not equal to is less than so some of the operators are available you can evaluate these conditions for example if e is greater than 0 this analysis will returns you know a rows greater than 0 just here click on test so that it, it it will try to evaluate your conditions nothing but this analysis returning some rows which is greater than 0 okay and save it here custom in condition just click on it so here you could see you know supplier condition here where is that there it is there with the sub, uh, this filter the filter symbol here let us see otb that filter yeah yeah, yeah. this is your condition this is your condition we, you can use this condition okay uh, where you are using nothing but in your otb section sorry in your scheduling section here this is your scheduling screen nothing but new agent so we'll get this screen as a scheduling here priority high normal low and runners specified a user or if you want to use any recipient you can add as a recipient just do not change anything here it's a default values only here when do you want the agent to be scheduled to run nothing but so based on the frequency so your frequency you can add here if you want to add the frequency you can add and run rerun uh, agent every for example daily and if you want to run every 1 minute or if you want to run every 10 minutes you know so that it will keep on running your you know agent nothing but whatever you are scheduled it will try to you know uh, running same as our bap report okay now we are scheduling as ad hoc base and here condition here condition a use a condition to specify whether the agent delivered its content and runs associated actions here settings do not use a condition always delivered content run actions or use a condition nothing but you can use your condition here browse so whatever created the condition right here custom bap reports so tbi here this is the condition just click on okay if you want to test you can here test it so that it will evaluate your condition just click on okay so this condition is true then only it will uh, you know your schedule is successfully completed so based on condition for this condition you can use any analysis based on this condition you can send any other uh, analysis information as a email notification here delivery content here delivery content you can write as a subject something you know supplier details and content is analysis or dashboard page or condition analysis you can use analysis and you can select your analysis here sheet folder custom so based on my condition i want to you know send my uh, 
something invoice analysis information as the email notification based on supplier if supplier condition is true i want to send my invoice in information to the inform invoice information as a email notification okay this is my invoice analysis in our condition we are added you know supplier condition right in condition we are added condition against your supplies if supplier data is greater than 0 then i am trying to send invoice information which is gp to invoice analysis format here html plain text csv so whatever you want you want if you want to send a pdf copy you can send your analysis will export the data in a pdf format or if you want to send an excel then it will send an excel format data deliver results directly deliver as attachment if you want to uh, send as a deliver as attachment, you can add the attachment and you can, you know, something attachment node. Details. If condition is fails, deliver this message. You can add this message. And the recipients. recipients okay this is my now we are logging with the test user right now we are logging with test user if the user is associated within an email okay this will goes to you know user email otherwise if you want to hard code your email recipients with a comma separated you can add just click on okay or else you can add here add recipient can add you know users here something gp user 001 something such this is my user if the user is associated with an email just you can you know add to this here in the selected members now this uh, analysis information will goes to this email id and this user okay here the destination destination if you want to send a specific devices email pager digital phone handle device these options are available so mostly we can go for email only if you want to use any other things you can use so mostly you can go for email just enable this and the actions property after you know executing your scheduling once your scheduling is part is completed agent condition true or no condition exists after execution after execution of your agent nothing but after execution of scheduling if you want to perform anything then you can add here anything for example after executing this uh, agent i want to invoke one action here invoke invoke agent nothing but you can save this agent and you can use that agent here also in an agent again you can use you know child agent like that or invoke a web service or invoke a you know java method server script whatever it may be if you want here agent condition is false if condition is false then you can use anything so in general we are not using this option also in real time mostly we are you know evaluate the condition if condition is true then we are sending a delivery content to the respective recipients to the respective destination this we can use now you can you know save this agent here there is an option save Oh, no, okay and save it now catalog here you can find you know agent this is your agent 
now we have created as ad hoc base right just you can click on the run so that it will try to run your agent now it's running and now the agent so on so is ran successfully nothing but your condition is evaluated evaluated true and your analysis information uh, will goes to and respect to email notifications in that email notifications if you want to use you can use you know narrative views if you want to display the look and feel if you want to spend, uh, send a, a single record in your email notification then you can go for email notifications so how you are sending email notification nothing but based on your conditions here in the more details click on the more details. you can find you know <coughs> Uh, last run details yeah here agent is successful these are last run details agent is successful and this is last run agent successful and the next run is uh, blank if you schedule this just edit this here schedule here something daily every one day so on so just try to save it now catalog which is where do we refer the narrative view analysis itself yeah analysis itself just okay. we have modified analysis right based yeah. analysis we are created you know narrative view after creation of narration view narrative view we are deleted our table representation data correct here in the more details again you can find you know running agent the next run 916 so on so we are selected as one day right so next run so you can find your you know last run and the next run details here you can find the way you can add your you can perform you know uh, the scheduling for your otb reports okay if an employee terminated in organization okay then uh, you need to create an analysis and based on some attributes and you keep on scheduling every day if your analysis gets uh, meet your condition you need to send an email notification to the respective recipients so on so this uh, employee is terminated and so on so employee this is the last day and you can send narrative view information to the respective recipients as the email notification now it's hard coded with my no yeah see here now it's hard coded to my official email yeah i need to remove this keep on getting details so here are supplier details this is supplier subject and this is your invoice information supplier number so on so and this is you know complete information if you want to send you know narrative view information you will get a narrative view information here here itself you will get no sorry not here itself in the attachment itself you will get a you know email notification something you can feel like this you will get a email notifications and uh, vijay we don't have any other option uh, other than email like ftp or some like no, no we do not have anything if you want to send an ftp again you can use this otb to bap reports okay you want to use more delivery channels other than email so whatever they are provided otb delivery channels those are not uh, important for us except email something page digital services in general we are not using right those yeah okay so this is something related to agents and scheduling part okay now we are done with otba reports any doubts any clarifications any comments the way you can develop your analysis dashboard prompts and your uh, dashboards agents conditions and actions and your deep links and build on features mostly we can go for you know dashboard prompt dashboard development and this deep link features 
in real time mostly we will try to implement these deep link features for application specific which is how to deliver this dashboard i mean uh, on the home page that is we'll see in application composer activities the last section we need sandbox uh, changes for that we'll try to you know uh, embed or integrate odba and bap information in our home screen okay so this is some uh, vijay and uh, how to migrate this from one instance to other instance same you know archive okay all your dashboard and dashboard related components whether it would whether it would be either it would be filter and dashboard prompt or condition or agent or action you know just you can uh, here for filter there is no option filter oracle is not provided for migration i think we did in that case we can uh, directly download the folder itself yeah you can yeah. instead of that you can directly download the folder good catch filter where is that custom right yeah custom so that all the components get downloaded Just expand more. You can archive. This is complete your catalog folder. If you want to upload, you can upload here. An archive. Your catalog file. Just click on OK. It will try to upload. This is the OTBA folder. The complete object gets you know. migrated or kevin and archive same as our bap report for download and up upload option for xmlp server bap reports for standard report customizations or kevin and archive for analytic server so this is something related to otb reports okay now we will move on to the next concept file based data import this is the most important concept in our fusion technical bap reports and fb day process and integrations are backbone concepts for our saas application very rare will get this otb development and very some cases we are involving the security and roles okay but most important concept are fb day process bap reports and integrations so whatever bap reports and fb day processes process are there these two concepts we are integrating with our oic application in oic tool we are uh, supposed to use this fb day process and we are supposed to invoke our ot uh, sorry your bap reports okay now file based data import so how will you identify file fb day components or fb day business entities aim here something can navigate to your you know oracle web content same financials this is our oracle web content select the financials in our example you know uh, in our session we'll see gl journal import and er invoices and er customers these business entities are vary uh, one business entity to other business entities vary no relationship between each fb day process these are you know three different scenarios the reprocess mechanism is different with gl to uh, er customer and er invoice and er customers to er invoice and er invoice to er customer A reprocess is different and purging concept is different and some of the entities we do have you know uh, correct the import errors from adf desktop integrated sheets for some of the business entities we do not have this facility that we'll see here uh, i think administer here in administer section we do have import data get started with file based data import just select this here you can find all your financials fba business entity file based data import nothing but inbound interfaces inbound pattern 
inbound pattern in general in, uh, in our article what we do in order to you know load the data from food systems to our erp systems by using sql loader we will get a uh, flat file from the client and by using uh, sql loader we'll try to insert the data into you know, one of the staging table right custom table so once you have the data in your custom table by using that custom table uh, we will write a NeoSQL package to perform the validations if validations are successfully completed then i will try to insert the data into your uh, interface table and submitting uh, one of the standard concurrent program in order to push the data from interface tables to base tables right in middle if any errors are there simply error tables are affected just will refer those error tables and will try to reprocess the data that is you know traditional or your article concept right inbound pattern if any validations or errors are failed this we are updating you know staging table with some flags something status column error message error code from our purpose right so here also so how you are inserting the data into your staging table first of all uh, for example you, we are getting a data from csv file flat file now you do have the flat file so how you are inserting into your uh, staging table by using flat file what is the concept we are implementing in our article control file control file right by using control file nothing but we are using sql loader by using sql loader tool we are writing one of the control file in the control file control file we are mentioning like so on so table so on so append operation and you can skip the first record which is header and we are mentioning some of the columns and if any default values is there just we are adding the keywords like default null or default something values we are trying to populate and it will insert the data into our custom table the same concept here also to insert the data into our interface table okay in our saas application oracle is implemented same sql order concept to insert the data into data into your interface table there is no staging table concept here whatever data is there the data is directly goes to your interface table by using sql order control file no peer sql packages and no you know uh, nothing here a staging table concept okay that is we'll see in detail now these are financial fb day import business entities something assets budgetary control cash management you know general ledger payables payments receivables here receivables auto invoice import nothing but this is for ar invoices this is payments and this is payables and this is general ledger this is general ledger general import is nothing but your import the generals from the legacy systems okay here object owner is something we are saying general ledger general ucm account finance general ledger import this business entity is using this ucm account so whatever fba flat file is there that flat file we are trying to push into this ucm location from this location you know oracle is trying to unzip your file and load the data into your interface table but in the same way for each business entity we do have this ucm accounts for example here er invoice import this is your you know ucm account finance auto invoice import and this is something finance receivables import so whatever it may be you can if you select anything this is a mandatory finance payments import you see account means uh, something like your uh, uh, our file folder what was in the article to push the files same for control files uh, for sql dot concept we are in our article we are placing the files in a bin folder right the same way here also they are referring some ucm accounts for each business entity it's completely controlled by oracle itself okay. file links the next section file links are available excel sm template nothing but this is your file based data import fba template 
Just click on this, it will download a template in our local machine. And your control files, general import control file. Just click on this, again it will download the control file. ODA data mode is not required for us. Get job and table links. Schedule process name, import journals, and the tables are GL interface. Now what Oracle is saying, for this journal import, only one interface table is available. For this interface table, by using, by using this control file, it will try to insert the data into this interface table, GL interface. Now we'll observe the control file here. This is our control file. Load data into, load data, append into so on so GL interface, same as our, you know, uh, art well control file only, nothing is changed here. Optionally enclosed by so on so, the load request ID and so on so, all the columns. Okay. If any errors with the control file, the same concept here also, bad file and the discard, discard files will be generated. By using that, we can debug what is the exact issue. And this is your general import template. This is FBDA template. Here, first sheet we do have instructions and CSV generation. This is the common sheet across all the FBDA business entities. Instruction CSV generation. Here they will mention how to prepare the table data, how to load the data, and some you know uh, prerequisites like date fields must be entered so and so in this format only. Amount columns must not contain a thousand separator must be period dot as a decimal operator. Columns that must be whole numbers have data validation to allow only whole numbers. The way you know some of the you know, prerequisites they will maintain and recommendations for loading journal data. So how will you load the data here they will mention and to submit import journal process, what is the process and to correct the import errors, what is the process. Just high level information here we do have, not so in detail, just high level. Okay. Here there is a button, generate CSV file. Once you populate the data into your FBDA sheet, when you click on generate CSV file, it will try to you know, create a CSV file with a comma separated data and that CSV file is placed in one of the zip file. The complete process will take care by generate CSV file button by using some of the macros it behind. Some of the ma macros are implemented by using uh, behind this button. When you click on generate CSV file, whatever here, as of now we do have, you know, a one interface table is available for a GL interface. Let's assume you are populated your, you know, complete GL interface data. This is GL interface data. Just click on generate CSV file. Just save the file, that's it. Now here, if you observe here, this is our GL interface. Just unzip it. So this is your, you know, CSV file. Just read it with, you know, Notepad++. Plus plus. This is complete your data with a comma separate. Same as our, your Artable concept. Now, by using ESS jobs, we'll try to push uh, this file into, you know, respective UCM account. From that location, the ESS job will try to unzip this file and it will load the data by using this CSV file with help of, you know, SQL loader. And it will try to insert the data into your interface table. Okay, so before this, first we'll see, every FBDA process does have two ESS jobs. FBDA process does have two ESS jobs. Load interface file for import. Load interface file for import. And the second one is main import ESA job. 
again import ESA job. The load interface file for importers have two parameters. Two parameters. Import process name. Import process name nothing but target business entity. In our case, you know, import journals, whatever it may be, any business entity. If you want to import auto invoices, import auto invoice. If you want to work with, you know, AR customers, import trading community data in bulk. If you want to import sales orders, then import sales orders. So how will you find this import process name is nothing but in our web content, we do have, you know, scheduled process name. This is, you know, load interface file for import. First parameter import process, import process name. This is scheduled process, import journals. Okay. Now, second parameter is your data file. Data file, nothing but your JIC file. So when you submit this ESS job with this respect to parameters, okay, it will try to insert the data into your interface tables. For example, for import journals, we do have one uh, interface table, JIR interface, so that when this job is successfully completed, data will insert into your JIR interface table. For example, when you're working with ER customers, nothing but ER customer does have uh, you know around 14 to 15 interface tables are available for us so when a load interface file for import is successfully completed then 14 interface tables get affected uh, when you're working with ER customers for AR invoices we do have around around uh, i guess yeah four interface tables are available so it will try to insert the data into four interface table okay the way you can submit stage one this is called as a stage one stage one is nothing but inserting or push the data into our interface tables stage two is nothing but main import ess job main import ess job some name sometimes the same as your load interface file for import import process name sometimes this name uh, sometimes a main import ess job could be different for import journals, we do have import journals only. Uh, let's assume here, they are invoice import. This is AR invoice import. They are saying schedule process import auto invoice. So main import is a job and your uh, stage one schedule process name also same in this case. For other scenario, this is customer import. For customer import, schedule process process is import trading community data in bulk, which is stage one load interface file for import import process name. This is. And the main import job name is import bulk customers. The second main ESS job import job name is not maintained anywhere in our Oracle web content. If you want to uh, get that information, you may search in our meta link. You can find that, you know, main import ESS jobs. But ideally or usually, you know, in generally, all uh, for all the business entities, Whatever stage one import process name is there, the same we are maintaining for main import ESS job also. Sometimes some of the business entities, these process names could be different. Okay. Now, the main import ESS job, which is you know import journals for import for journals. For this import journals, we do have you know n number of parameters like this for each business entity. If you take import sales orders, we do have sales order related parameters. For import journals, import journals related parameters. 
for ar customer custom related parameters is you know available for your main import ess job this is we call as stage 2 for import generals we do have parameters like data access set and your source okay source nothing but our general source whether it is spreadsheet assets tables cbs whatever it may be and you do have some ledger and group id group id so these parameters is available for import generals like this we do have uh, you know business entity wise parameters are available we need to fulfill those parameters while submitting your main import ess job the way we do have stage 1 and stage 2 in between if any errors are available for example let's assume you are submitted stage 1 load interface file for import for import generals and data was there in your interface tables jail interface table now you are imported now you are submitted stage 2 which is import generals okay submit you are submitted import generals and you know some of the records are went fail so how will you debug here nothing but the reprocess how the data is is there is nothing but whatever error data is there those error data is updated with a status column in your jail interface table the way oracle is not maintaining any interface error tables here so whatever errors are there whatever error status interface status is there that could be updated in your against your interface uh, your business entity interface status okay for import generals we do have status column is there so it will update the status column for ar invoice for example if we take ar invoice import auto invoice especially for auto invoice oracle is not maintaining any status columns if any errors are there it will generate one of the ba publisher report in that report Uh, we come to know what are the errors, and we'll try to reprocess the data. Like that, uh, each business entity or business entity wise, we do have different error mechanisms. Import generals status is updated interface table only. For AR invoice, uh, your errors you can get from your BIP report. For AR customers, there is no you know error table concept and all. it will keep on update the data for er customers so there is no reprocess mechanism for er customers okay for import sales orders again we need to you know uh, it will update interface status column in your interface tables okay this is something related to your, your fbd process which is stage 1 and stage 2 here in the stage 1 data file zip file nothing but this file right this file oracle is provided two ways to upload this file one is in the parameter itself data file here we do have one of the option upload file one of the hyperlink is available for us when you click on the upload file you will get a you know a browse option to select your zip file there itself you can select your file and submit the process or you can upload file into ucm location ucm location so what is your ucm location for jempo generals nothing but here you can find this is general import this is your ucm location ucm location by using file In our navigator, uh, in our navigator board, we do have one of the option: file export and import. In their file export, import and import, file export and import. There we can find UCM account drop down. In that UCM account drop down, we can find this UCM account information. Again, as this, you can upload your zip file. So whatever you are uploading the zip file, the same file you can see in your data file text box. Just you can select. that file or you can directly upload to you know by using upload file for your second parameter 
of before 19d we do have this feature as independent after 19d version oracle is integrated in the parameter itself to upload the file so this is something related to you know fbd process stage 1 and stage 2 for each and every fbd concept we do have these two process stage 1 and stage 2 stage 1 interface concept stage 2 interface to base table concept for for every fbd process we do have two ess jobs one is load interface file for import one is main input ess job so we did this is a job set or or we have to submit two different jobs sorry uh, is are these two stages part of a job set or we have to submit uh, two different uh, job sets every day independent uh, now now in, uh, now i am submitting these are independent if you want to perform as a if you want to create a job set you can create no issues okay okay so in general we are in my experience i am not seen anywhere you know, to create a job set for this for a bid process always we are you know uh, 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 submitting these jobs as independent because every time we need to select import process name and data file right and for import is a job also we need to change the parameters and all and yeah this is a process for fbdi now especially for import general process we'll discuss on import general process as of now it's clear right the ebd process uh, uj like uh, you generated one control file right like so yes. so is that like going to be automatically into that uh, ucm folder or like we need yes. to upload yeah, there is no manual interruption nothing is required here everything will take care by is job itself okay okay just for our uh, reference purpose they are you know attached control files in our oracle web content but we are not using any way that control file by using a java uh, utility oracle is uh, invoking this sql loader command it is then uh, so when we are uh, doing that first step only it will be automatically place that control file right like correct interface file for import yeah. now we'll see in detail so that you can easily understand now <clears throat> import generates fbd process Let's assume this is your stage one. Let's assume you are submitted stage one program, stage one ESS job. So what it will do? Very first time, it will submit load interface file for import ESS job and the child ESS jobs for this, not for this any business entity. any business entity first it will submit your parent ess job and the child jobs are you know transfer file this is one of the transfer file ess job this will transfer your file into your respective ucm location okay respective ucm location and load file to interface one more ess job will be submitted this will take care to insert the data into your interface table by using control file in our case we do have a gl interface one table is there so it will try to insert the data into your interface table by using control file with the help of sql loader load file to interface let's assume uh, when you working with your er customers we do have you know around 15 interface tables are there further 15 interface table it will try to you know in load file to interface for each load file interface we do have you know control files by using sql loader for each interface table it will try to insert the data by using these esl jobs now in our case gl interface we do have only one interface table so it will try to submit load file to interface table which push the data into your interface table okay when so 
let's assume your data in your interface table very first time when your data in interface table nothing but uh, this ess job is successfully completed your data there in your interface table very first time status column is new very first time status column is new in your gl interface table gl interface status column is gl interface status is new okay now let's assume you are submitted main import ess job along with the parameters okay here data access set nothing but in security context we need to add data access set against your ledger before submitting this import journals first we need to get a ledger access so how will you get a ledger access nothing but in security context we need to add respective ledger to our user so that we will get an access for data access set and the source is nothing but here your general source whether it is payable sara site receivable spreadsheet whatever it may be general source when you select the general source okay these two are predefined parameters okay and these two are interface table data let's assume your selected source is assets and here let's assume your you are importing the journals against your asset source you are importing the journals for asset source okay when you select the source is assets in in generally for the source parameter you will get all the source in the drop down you you could see all your sources whatever application defined sources are sources are there you could see all the sources in your source parameter let's assume you are selected asset source then when you select the asset source against asset source if data is available in your interface table then it will try to display against assets ledger name here ledger name interface table when you select the source assets it will try to verify when you, uh, let's assume you are not selected the source here okay then this ledger id and the group id these two parameters are blank when you select the source okay assets then the parameter itself identify if data is available against the source in gl interface then these two parameter are gets open now we could see the ledger data against your assets and the group id group id is nothing but here let's assume group id 101 here group id is nothing but you are importing journals i am also importing the journals the way 10 people are at a time importing the journals to same environment 10 resources are importing your uh, you know journals Of the same environment. So how will you segregate the data? This is your data. This is my data. Nothing but with help of group ID. This is a unique value across all your records in your B data template. Let's assume you are populating thousand records. For thousand records, you need to maintain the group ID something one zero one, so that it will try to you know uh, display your group IDs against your G interface table against your source let's assume 10 people 10 uh, resources are imported data into gl interface with a different group ids 1 0 1 and let's assume assets uh, asset source is same when you select the source is assets and it will show you the ledger name and it will show you the group id in, in your elvo is these values 1 0 1 2 3 4 5 and the common value is all when you select all and when you submit import ess job import journals when you submit this process irrespective of these group ids 
it will try to process the data against the source assets so do not submit any time with all okay always you need to submit your own group id only so that you can populate your group id data into your base tables so we are we passing this group id in yes. uh, csv file yes correct in our csv file we are populating this group id okay this is the manual process we need to generate this group id as a uh, manual step in our csv sheet and we say if we don't select the source then all the sources from the file will be considered right no we need to must and should as a mandatory step to select the source but then uh, if if our file contains multiple sources uh, so each time we multiple have to select the source not, and then yeah it's not possible to process multiple sources at a time we need to uh, select source by so, uh, you know source by source only for oh. example your loaded assets and these two sources data you are you know populated in a gl interface table now if you want to process assets data first you need to select assets so that it it will show you a ledger name and group 101 id and you can process assets and when you select the payables again it will show you a ledger name and it will try to show you a group id 101 so so so, for, so say suppose for assets we have data for multiple ledgers then also we have to submit uh, each uh, each time for each le uh, ledger exactly oh then that's a yeah tedious process yeah this is the process for you know uh, stage 2 now we'll try to you know observe the data here this is your gl interface data for if when you uh, download any fbda business entity to your local uh, your local mission okay oracle will populate some sample data with us for our reference purpose how to populate the data into your interface tables this is your sample data how to populate sample data here yeah. the first column is status code which is indicating star mark nothing but some mandatory and for each and every column Oracle is, uh, you know, providing a comments for us. Status not null. Where car two fifty. General import status. Use the value new to indicate that you are importing new data into the general ledger. Other than new, we do not have any column for this. Not sure why Oracle is maintaining the drop down for this. Other than new, we do not have any value for this. So it's always new, which is the static value. And ledger ID. here enter the appropriate ledger id value for the journal entries data you can view the ledger id for your ledgers in manage primary ledgers page the ledger id columns is hidden by default but you can display it from the view columns menu and like this you know for each column the possible navigations will provided by oracle for us for example journal source you may navigate to you know or uh, you can find a list of valid values in the manage journal sources setup task page like this you can find the you know possible navigation from setup and maintenance simply you can navigate to manage journal sources so that you, there you could see all your defined journal sources the way you can find your you know mandatory columns and some of the navigations and oracle is uh, in maintaining some of the mandatory columns here even though let's assume here see these are code combinations code combinations are mandatory in order to create a journal but oracle is not maintain these are mandatory because we are not sure right for some of the chart accounts we do have three combinations for our, for some of the chart of accounts we do have eight segments combinations the way oracle is not maintain some of the you know mandatory columns uh with a star mark okay so not sure which is mandatory which is not mandatory so in order to find exact mandatory columns first we need to create a transaction from your ui in ui you can find uh, you know what are the mandate information there and try to populate the same information in your fbda template whatever it may be 
if it is your customer then try to create a, a customer in from ui there you can find what is the important information and try to populate those information and, and try to process the every day process if any errors are there then it will throw an error so and so columns are missing then we'll try to resolve those here status code is new ledger id here ledger id is nothing but your fusion ledger id against your gl ledger table you need to find the ledger id so in general scenario in real time scenarios we are not using this ledger ids instead of ledger id we do have the last section we do have ledger name you can use ledger name because when you get the data from the source system always ledger names are in sync ids will not sync anywhere when you use ledger name at that moment ledger id can override then it will take as a precedence as a ledger name when you use the ledger name then ledger id would be blank here just keep the maintain ledger id is blank and effective data transaction general source general category currency code general entry creation date actual flag and followed by this code combinations are common and here this is Counted, entered debit, entered credit, converted debit, converted credit. Your batch name, batch description, general entry name, general entry description. And if you want any reference fields, you can use the reference fields here. And if you want to use any currency conversion types, currency conversion type, currency conversion date and rate, you can use. This is interface group identifier across the same for all the rows. This is we are populating as a manual. This value we can see in our parameter, which is group ID. Here you could see interface group identifier, but in our jail interface table, it will represent as group ID. Okay, this will be same all all your rows. By using this group ID, you can segregate your data. This is my data, like that. And these are you know DFF columns. this is context based on the context you can you know uh, populate your dff values this is you know ledger name and this is your period name period name this is ledger name this is the common data for you know gl interface fb day process so tomorrow i will try to create you know uh, one of the journal from ui and we'll try to populate this uh, we'll try to create the same journal by using ab day process before that we'll see how to get an access for data access set by using security context we'll see some of the setups for this uh, mandatory setups like journal source category and we'll see the start of accounts okay and we'll see security context then we'll create a transaction or journal from ui and we'll try to create the same from every day process that's it for today max you know